Hey guys, Moan Pobert here and today we're going to talk about the best business strategy and this is part three. Let's get to it. So hey, if you're new to this channel, this channel is all about me sharing and documenting my journey, basically being involved in more than 10 businesses over the last few years, all seven figure businesses. Some uh, I've been involved in more as an advisor and consultant as well, but uh, 10 as shareholder. So if you want to learn more about that, definitely like, subscribe, comment below, let me know what you think. And also I'm here to expand on things like, uh, I guess, things that only big corporate companies are doing in order to grow their businesses and how you can implement those strategies into your small businesses. So for example, how to grow your business by acquisitions, that's one of the things. And we're also going to compare that versus growing organically by just doing more sales and marketing. So um, yeah, that's, that's it for the introduction. But either way, this video is all about kind of like talking a little bit more about what is the best strategies. I'm getting emails all the time. Hey, Moan, what is the best strategies? Um, what's going to give me the best results for my business? And people always think that it's about the strategy. It's about the next skill. It's about the next tactic. And I'm here to basically tell you that it's not about that, guys, because business is about fundamentals that you need to repeat again and again and again. In order to succeed in those fundamentals, it's 80 or 90, so 80% mindset and maybe 10% execution and only 10% the actual strategy that you follow. Because, guys, you all have all the information in the world. We all have access to information. Information isn't enough anymore nowadays. It's, I guess, a transformation from the information world to the transformation and actually implementation world, if that makes sense. And, and this is what I'm trying to show you that I don't care what strategy you have, unless you have the right mindset and the right execution and the right execution will come if you have the right accountability and support, no strategy will work. And in the other videos we talk about, we talked about things like self-doubt and perfectionism and definitely check the other videos to, to see more about that because I think those are two big things that really hold you back because if you're perfectionist and you always try to get ready to get ready and you always try to learn the best new thing in, in, instead of actually implementing the fundamental, you're not going to be successful. Same goes with self-doubt and self-doubt many times comes because you're looking at too many sources and you're trying to um, create one puzzle from the many different puzzle boxes, if that makes sense. And today I want to talk about something that I see really holding back many business owners, which is the do-it-yourself attitude. And I see so many people out there are doing that. They have an existing business. They got to some success because they did it all on their own. They got to six figures or maybe even small seven figure business and they, they've done it all on their own. And maybe they hired a few, few employees here and there, but they already hired those employees after they did everything on their own. And what I found out is that many people are literally missing out on their potential because they want to do everything on their own. And I'm talking even learning new skills in the business. They try to learn it all on themselves, like watching YouTube videos, like reading more books, going to more seminars. And it's really, really hard to watch hundreds of videos and trying to compete against people who are literally master in those fields. For example, imagine if you... Uh, there, there's someone out there who's like a doctor learning years worth of how to be a doctor right in, in the uni and then doing stage and all that and you one day would just come in and say hey I'm going to be a doctor but I'm going to learn it all on my own I'm not going to follow other doctors and learn from their process I'm just going to do it all on my own now business is a, dif a bit different but it's very similar Yes, you can grow a business to some extent on your own, but you can grow it behind a small seven figures if you try to do everything on your own. If you're just going out there and say, hey, I'm going to watch all the videos on YouTube on business, I'm going to read all the books, and then I'm going to do everything on my own. It's going to be really hard to take all that knowledge and put it into one actual implementation step-by-step -step process all on your own. And I'm not even talking about you not having the support and system. It's just going to be really, really hard to take little small nuances from different places and trying to, uh, I guess, build yourself a new, a new process based on everything out there that you checked. So, and, 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 and it's, it's hard, guys. Most people will tell you, yeah, it's okay, learn it all on your own, but just, just check their stats, what they're doing, what they're doing for a living. Are they owning a business that you want to own? Do they have the amount of revenues, profit, and lifestyle that you want to have? And if they don't have that, just don't listen to them. Look at the biggest businesses out there in the world. 
You think that Jeff Bezos with Amazon would grow such a big business on his own? You think that Mark Zuckerberg would do it all on his own? There's no way. They all use people who already, many of them achieved what they already wanted to achieve and they just learn from them and they literally, they shadow them, they pay them, they do whatever it takes to go and learn the process A to Z or even literally give it to them to implement in their existing business. And same goes with creating new products in your existing business. So let's say you're selling one product and that's what got you to six or small seven figure business. And now you're trying to invent or I guess create new services and products to sell to your customers, right? which is a very fair next step in your business. You want to have one main product to begin with. You want to grow it to at least, you can grow one product to at least seven figure. But then at some stage you want to introduce other products or services to your clients. And many people, the first thought is let's do everything internally in-house. Let's try to think about new product services. Let's learn the process. Let's develop. Let's bring in developers and do those things. And let's create a software to sell them. Or let's create this e-commerce product ourselves. And, and all those different products and ideas for services that you want to sell to your list of clients, which is a very fair next step. But again, they're trying to do it all on their own. So that's kind of like the organic way to do things, to try to do everything in-house. The other option is to do and grow things by acquisitions. So you can go out there and instead of doing everything in-house, you can go and buy a business with those services and products that you already want to do in-house. And it will probably cost you the same, if not less, to buy that business with those existing products already. So that second business already worked years to, to basically invent that product, to adjust it, to make it better. And you can just go and buy that business. And you're not only going to buy those assets of those products and services and the years that it took them, you can also buy their talent, the people who created those products. So when you buy a business, you can buy the business with the employees. You can buy the business, with, you're also gonna bring more revenues because you buy usually business with existing revenues and profit. And then you can have the play there. You can have all the cross selling and the synergy and you're going to save yourself literally years worth of trying to do everything on your own. So that's that's kind of like my thought. Yes, you can do things internally and spend a lot of money in R&D and research and development and creating new products or you can just take that money and just put it into growing and buy acquisitions by buying businesses who already have those things that you want to implement in your business. So again, I'm not here to tell you that this is right and this is wrong or this is wrong and this is right both can work it's just a matter of what do you want to do faster if you want to do things fast go and buy a business with the product that you want and don't do it yourself if you want to grow slow and maybe i don't know really try and fail a lot yeah maybe do it yourself maybe go and learn from everyone out there for free and try to do it on your own in my opinion just a waste of a lot of time resources and capital that you can use to buy a business because if you saw my other videos you know you can take that money, you can buy a business. Let's say you have 50 grand in cash in your bank or 100,000 or 200,000. You can buy literally a $2 million business with that capital or 5 million. Obviously it depends on the deal that you find and the negotiation and there's a process to do that and, and get to a point where you're not spending all of your money to buy businesses. We're basically using other people money, OPM and institutions money and maybe a small percentage from your own capital to buy those businesses but the upside is just insane compared to the amount of work it will take you to create things internally with delivering and initiating new products so yeah, those are just two thoughts right you can grow organically or you can grow by acquisitions in my opinion growing by acquisitions is much better and that's what the biggest companies out there are doing that's why facebook facebook could go and create a new department in the business to create Instagram, right? They could do that, but it will take them a lot of time and money, maybe even years to come to the same results that Instagram already got. So what they did instead, they just went out there and bought Instagram and they also bought the talent in Instagram, the employees, the, the CEOs, all that, and bring them to Facebook. And then they can bring their services and products to Instagram, like their advertising platform, like all of their other technologies and implement and do the cross selling opportunities. And that's where you can really have an amazing upside. So that's what you can do with your small business, which I, I highly suggest you to do that. And yeah, if you want to explore if your business can fit that, uh, so ideally your business is already doing at least six figures in sales, then I believe you can definitely explore those options. If you want to see if it's a fit, me and my team were involved in more than 300 deals. 
we can de definitely help you and see if uh, this is a fit for you. If you want to learn and explore that, go to moanpobert.com forward slash talk. We will have a conversation and just figure out where you're at in business right now, where do you want to be, and we'll see if we can help you. And if, if we can help you, we'll invite you to work with us. Otherwise, we will send you to someone else to help you. But we just want to add value to you because this is our way to give back and potentially be involved in some of those deals ourselves in the future. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. See the links in the description below. Join our free uh, business growth mastermind on Facebook and yeah, like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know what you think. I'll comment back to you myself and that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.